We <laughs> are live. Ah, uh, Wednesdays. Wednesdays. Yes. Uh, it is six o'clock. That means uh, it's six o'clock Wednesday night here in the Well Season Kitchen. That means we are live, and um, we're cooking stuff tonight. Stuff. Some all kinds of stuff. All kinds of stuff to jazz up your cheese and meat boards. Mm -hmm. yeah. How are you? I'm. 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 I'm good. You're okay. kind of like a little disheveled. I feel like maybe you got sprayed with some flour today. Did that happen? Very strong possibility. Our new pastry <laughs> chef is a bit of a danger zone sometimes. Was it today the mixer exploded or was that no, yesterday? No, that was yesterday, but there are still remnants of cocoa <laughs> it's to everywhere. be found. It's everywhere. Yeah. But she did good today. She did good. There, no, was, no, there was no like powder explosion. Nothing today. got burnt. Nothing exploded. No. Well, you know, tomorrow's a new day. Tomorrow's a new day. We we'll try again. <laughs> so welcome to Well Season. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Angie. This is Chef Tessa. And um, if you were with us, was it last week we made the booze? Yeah. Yeah. So last week we did some DIY planning for the holidays uh, to make some Christmas cocktail kind of things. So uh, we made like our own house made, um, like a Bailey, a version of a Bailey's. We made a white chocolate liqueur that Tessa's partner drank for breakfast. Um, <laughs> we made our uh, cranberry ginger gin. And so each week, except for the um, um, chocolate, white chocolate uh, situation, because that's already been consumed, we're going to use the alcohol that we made last week <laughs> in uh, a beverage for each of our classes. So. Uh, this was uh, some gin, some local gin that had been infused with fresh raw cranberries yep. and fresh ginger yep. that was muddled. Yep. Is and, that it? And some lime zest. Oh, yeah, lime zest. And so it just literally has been sort of sitting. When did you strain it off? I strained it two and a half days after. And how and did you know sitting. when to do that? You just tasted it? I tasted it. I tasted it to see. It is quite tart and quite bitter, but I tasted it. I smelled it to make sure it was nice and floral. Are you going to try it on its own? Yeah, I want to yeah. taste it. I want to see how uh, strong the uh, the ginger is and how, uh, like, the cranberries are kind of tannic, right? Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Um, wow. Um, yeah, definitely need some simple syrup. Yeah, there. I'm working on it. I'm making you a delicious cocktail <laughs> as we speak, as we speak. So I do get a little bit of the lime in there. Uh, so this is our... Cranberry ginger lime gin, and Tess is making a gin fizz, right? Yeah. Similar. So, well, I mean, I'm not going to fizz mine, but you can fizz yours. Oh, okay. Only it's because it's a DIY it fits. cocktail. It's now. a DIY cocktail. Uh, yeah, similar to a gin fizz. There's a little bit of egg white that's going to go in here. So, I had uh, two ounces, two makeshift ounces here with my tablespoon of gin. We're doing uh, three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup, and I did three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice. So and fresh squeezed lemon juice, simple syrup is equal parts uh, sugar and water that's mm -hmm. just brought to a boil to dissolve all the sugar, and, uh, <laughs> and then dissolved. Um, and then um, this is a fresh, um, is this a pasteurized egg yolk or a raw egg yolk? Like a fresh egg yolk? Uh, pasteurized. Okay. So yeah. If you're using uh, raw eggs, you have to crack them and use them immediately. Mm -hmm. um, you can buy the pasteurized egg whites, which work really great for cocktails, and then you can keep them in the refrigerator. They're in the section, um, the section where they sell like yogurt and stuff at the grocery store, and they come yeah. in like a half liter container. So if you make, if you're planning on making these for a crowd, or um, some people make egg white omelets with it, but yeah. they're they're super convenient if you're if you're making cocktails. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I love cocktails with egg whites because then I say it's a balanced dinner because there's protein. There you go. Right? Yeah. My parents don't agree, but. So if you're not, uh, if you're a vegetarian or vegan or whatever and you don't feel like the raw egg white in there, you can certainly eliminate it, mm -hmm. but then it wouldn't be, a, you know, a true gin fizz. It wouldn't be, but you can use aquafaba in its replacement. I yeah. eat chickpea water. Mm -hmm. uh, if you can get past the fact that you're drinking chickpea foamy water. It doesn't taste weird, surprisingly. I did make a... Uh, I have made vegan cocktails with uh, aquafaba, which is just drained chickpeas, um, and it's the water from the chickpeas, uh, and it doesn't really have a taste, and you're only using like an ounce of it or something. Um, so if I mean, anything, it's just more of a smell. It's got, don't you find it has a particular it smell? It does, but the booze will kill that yeah. for sure, especially oh, yeah. if it's gin or whiskey. That'll kill the smell for sure. So now that this uh, gin has been strained off, it'll keep in the fridge like virtually forever, yeah. right? Oh, um, yeah. 
So we've still got stashed away from last week our big vanilla bourbon. Mm -hmm. um, what else did we make? Oh, the Baileys. Uh, the Baileys, vegan Baileys. The Irish uh, orange cello. We've got right. some orange cello and then the hot butter rum base. So when I come in in the morning, I give those little jars a shake and just sort of um, redistribute the, the stuff that's going on in the alcohol. Are you okay there? I'm good. Is this going to take long? Because I'm not tipping. Okay, listen here. Can I have my rag? Yes. Thank you. I'm still not tipping. <laughs> You're not tipping? Not tipping. At all? At all. Oh. No. All right. Well, she tried to give me a cocktail that she'd already drank part of <laughs> to begin with. And I'm like, I don't want your gently used cocktail. I want a fresh one. Ooh, that's so, like, so festive. Right? And it's like just enough for the glass. And then as it sits, it, it will eventually separate there into your egg white. And you have your nice pink. Is there gin. a garnish for this guy? or? I mean, I did peel a little piece of lime, but then I wasn't in love with it. You could drop a cherry in. You could drop a cherry in. A good one, not some like crappy you maraschino. Know, maraschino. There's really good cherries you can buy that there are meant for cherries. cocktails. Cheers. Cheers. Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. Mm. Mm, that's really good. Yeah? So much better than the gin by itself. Oh, yeah. By yeah. itself, it's, you know, puts hair on your chest. Yeah, it's a little bracing. Yeah. But in this cocktail, it's really delicious. If you blend it down with everything. Mm. You could add the fizz. You could um, add the fizz. It does, it's, un, it's not necessary, I don't think. No, I feel but, if you want a little bit of effervescence, a little bit of sparkling, mm -hmm. then you could. Yeah. Um, but I think with the egg white, it kind of it's blends it all together, makes it if nice you, and smooth. If you plan on drinking, you know, 13 or 14 of these, you might want to add a little bit of fizz just to kind of, you know, keep things moving. Yeah, but uh, definitely, definitely. Um, yeah, this is a really good cocktail. Right? So if you've made this gin at home, the recipe for this cocktail is part of the, the recipe deck that Jenna's going to uh, post tonight. Mm -hmm. And so give it a try. It's really delicious. Yeah. And it's so pretty. That's it's right. It's so pretty. All right. So this week has been a little bit ridiculous with all of the flooding and the whole situation going on here in the Fraser Valley. Uh, most of you probably don't know this, but we have a commissary kitchen. Our commissary kitchen is on the Sumas floodplain in Abbotsford. And we share uh, kitchen space with the Eco Dairy and our really good friends at Nature's Pickens. And um, we have a, uh, our commercial kitchen is in an outbuilding on the farm. And so it's been a little bit hairy this week, worrying about our friends. We were evacuated from the kitchen on Monday afternoon. Uh, and I, you know, our staff is all safe. Every, everybody was safe, which was the most important thing. But I've really been worried a lot about our friends at Nature's Pickens because they have a huge, beautiful grocery store um, that was flooding and the farm. Our friends at the Eco Dairy, all of their all of their livestock and everything. It's been really harrowing for them. So mm -hmm. um, we got word today that we can go back to the kitchen. And I don't know how this happened, but for some reason, our kitchen didn't get any water inside of it. I mean, really, I have no idea how we dodged this bullet because the entire property flooded. Mm -hmm. Our kitchen must just be on some random hill, like some little hump. I need a little um, help that stands on. Anyhow, so I'm super grateful to, you know, to everybody, to the first responders and everybody who helped um, and in, continues to help everybody out there. The farmers are really, really having a hard time. And uh, mm -hmm. for those of you who don't live in this area, Sumas, pl uh, the plain, the, um, that whole area of the Fraser Valley is really the breadbasket of the province. It's where all of our protein, our dairy, our eggs, eggs come from. Mm -hmm. um, the Rogers flour mill is out there. And so anyhow, they need a lot of, you know, good juju in the next uh, little while to get through this really challenging period. So there's going to be supply chain issues for sure, because, you know, the lower mainland is still cut off from the rest of the province. Yeah. We're doing what Quebec <sighs> wishes they could do. Separate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Except we're not taking the Maritimes with no, us. No, we're not. <laughs> We've got the island. Yeah. So. Uh, anyhow, I just, I really wanted to, um, you know, thank the first responders and the volunteers who went out and sandbagged and even our own chef from our Abbotsford kitchen was out last night sandbagging. And so she even took people in who were displaced from their homes. So 
anyhow, it really does take take a village. So yeah. um, be patient with food. Prices are going to continue to go through the roof, and our farmers really are going to need us more than ever. So, And we're also not going to run out of toilet paper. Yeah, toilet paper is made in New Westminster, so, you know. Like so if you're hoarding stuff, just stop. It's stupid. You don't need to. You don't need all the um, toilet paper. Yeah. So we'll be back in our kitchen tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Our freezers are empty because we've been evacuated since Monday. Our freezers here in the store are a bit empty, but we have lots of inventory in Abbotsford. Thank God we didn't lose power or anything, so we haven't lost anything, which is like I, a miracle. Yeah, I can't. Really. Like after the first wave of flooding, I was like, okay, for sure. We lost it, and then it's like, no, everything was fine. And then at last night, I was like, there's no way. Yeah. There's no way we're going to make it out of this. Yeah. And then for some reason, I don't know, apparently um, some something in the universe likes you. Just your little, yeah, you know, Just our little bubble. Someone's so, watching out for you. Yeah. So anyhow, it's uh, it's a mess that needs cleaned up, and it's going to take quite a while. So anyhow, I just ask you guys to be patient with our food people and support your local farmers because... Yeah, they're really going to need us. Um, anyhow, so tonight we're talking all things cheese and charcuterie. Um, we make hundreds of charcuterie boards a month here, literally hundreds. <laughs> I would say we're probably close to the thousand mark. A month? You guys, yeah, you guys can, I've seen weeks where you've pumped out well over 200 yeah, boards. Yeah, we probably do a thousand a month somewhere yeah. in that neighborhood. It's a lot of cheese and a lot of charcuterie. So. Um, we have lots of great ideas about things that you can add to your charcuterie board. Um, our charcuterie boards are um, things that are just sort of available and they're always different depending on the product that we can get, you know, depending on the fruit that's available, depending on the cheese that's available. Mm -hmm. Our charcuterie here that we buy comes from Benetti Meats in Abbotsford, sorry, in, La in Alder Grove. And um, they make their salamis and stuff in house and so uh, we have a really good assortment of um, cured meats that we use. Mm -hmm. And um, a char charcuterie board, charcuterie is meat, okay? Meat. A cheese board is not a charcuterie board. A board with random shit on it is not a charcuterie board. Talk about vegan charcuterie boards? Yes. If your board does not have meat on it, it is not charcuterie it's board. It's just a beautiful spread. Yes, it, it's a beautiful board, a grazing board of yeah. some sort. But unless it has actual charcuterie on it, you can't call it a charcuterie no. board. There you go. That is my peeve, my pet peeve, Thank that you. people have make a s'mores board and call it a s'mores charcuterie. There's marshmallows. There's no meat. What? Like, no. It's a dessert platter. Yes. So anyhow, you've oh. been warned. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I do call them out when I see them online, mm -hmm. just so you know. Mm -hmm. I have friends that like tag me in photos and they're like, Angie, these people need a talking to. <laughs> so, you know, I'm just doing my, my job uh, going in and, you know, educating the world on the ways of charcuterie. Listen, um, anyhow. Someone's got to do it. Yeah, because people really care what I think about their charcuterie board or lack thereof. Yeah, your s'mores board, change the name <laughs> right now. Um, Anyhow, so it's the holidays, you're probably going to be entertaining and, uh, or be entertained, and you'll be asked to bring things to a party. Um, and so the person who shows up at my house during the holiday season with a shrimp ring from Costco has to wait in the car. So you don't want to be that guy who shows up with the Costco shrimp ring, seriously. Um, and the veggies and dip from Costco, if you hear that when they pop the lid off that, no. You know it's even better? I've used my car seat heater to thaw the shrimp ring no. faster. I have. I put it on my passenger seat. That's good. At least your car's nice and warm while you're waiting in it <laughs> yeah. for the evening. While I sleep in it. For, <laughs> I mean, um, I so tonight we're going to do some sort of fun additions um, to your cheese and charcuterie board. We've got the charcuterie board and um, uh, with some cheese just out just sort of so we can talk about the elements of a cheese and charcuterie board. So aside from the actual charcuterie on the board, the next most important element obviously is cheese. And so uh, on our cheese boards and charcuterie boards, we like to have an assortment of hard cheese and soft cheese. So this board has some aged Gouda, which is a hard, uh, semi-firm, semi-hard cheese, um, a nice aged cheddar, um, some brie, a little bit of blue because people, I think you need to have a little bit of blue cheese on a board because yeah. it's so nice with like a glass of wine or, yeah. or something. We use a nice creamy blue too, right? Yeah, so this so. is a Cambazola, mm -hmm. so it's not super 
like in your face. Nobody's gonna have, you know, gorgonzola breath. No, Ugh. it's almost like a cross between a brie and a blue. It really. is. That it's is. A, it's a creamy blue it's cheese. It's a cross between cambazola and blue. Or sorry, uh, go uh, gorgonzola, gorgonzola and, brie. and brie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, sorry, right. sorry. That's the veining in it. So it's pretty mild and it um, it's really nice with um, like fruity kind of accompaniments, you know, like a port jelly or or mm -hmm. something like that. So on our board, we've also got some dried fruit, so apricots. We make our own jams in-house for our charcuterie board. Right now, I think we're doing a apple. We have an apple, cranberry, cranberry anise. So our, our jams change depending mm -hmm. on what we have available and what needs to be used up, frankly. Um, odds and ends of fruit that need to be used, they just go into our jam for our charcuterie because mm -hmm. um, we try not to waste things here. Um, and then um, some cured meats. So we've got a couple kinds of salami. There's some Genoa salami, some hot suppressa, uh, Benetti's uh, smoked, um, uh, they call it an appy sausage. It's similar to like a farmer sausage, but maybe not as much garlic. Mm. Um, and then some, there's some borsin on there. I think when you're going to a party and you don't know, if, if somebody asks you to bring a uh, cheese and charcuterie board, I think you wanna bring a board that's really easy for everybody to eat. Yeah, you don't want to pick anything that's one might scare people. Yeah. You want it to be like familiar, um, but that's easy to definitely kind of portion and eat. If someone took a block of Beamster and put it on the board and put it in front of me, I would rage. Really? Well, just, just gotta cut it. Yeah, well, I mean, they make cheese knives for a reason. And I think if you put out a whole block of cheese, sometimes it looks nice on the board and people can help themselves. That's true. Yeah. But COVID times, I think mm. it's better to sort of portion as much as you can so people aren't like, you know, Get handling little, stuff too much. In it. Um, but I think, you know, if you're going somewhere and you're not serving this as a course, mm -hmm. because I love a cheese course after dinner and yes. actually instead of dessert, I love a cheese yeah, course. Me too. Um, but you want to have cheeses that everybody sort of recognizes, some good cheddar, and you can have some um, mm -hmm. sort of more exotic type cheeses. Mm -hmm. You can go visit our friends at Les Amis de Fromage in Vancouver. Their cheese selection will just kill you. It's phenomenal. And if you ask them for their recommendations for your charcuterie board, they will pick out some really beautiful cheese and they'll also sell you some really great charcuterie. So, um, and you can order a cheese and charcuterie board from them. So it's ready when you pick it up. So their uh, website is buycheese.ca and they have the best selection of cheese in Canada, seriously. Mm -hmm. And they sell really beautiful accompaniments for it. They're, they have two stores in Vancouver, one on East Hastings and one on West 2nd near Granville Island and they're really great people and anyhow so check out their website buycheese.ca so tonight we're going to do a brie brulee yep. which is like a torched brie mm -hmm. um, something called Christmas cheese something which is called like Christmas cheese. a marinated cheese uh, some warm olives we're gonna do some warm marinated olives we're also going to be doing a savory shortbread we're gonna do a parmesan mm. and rosemary savory shortbread as well and then goat cheese truffles truffles did you say that already no oh no. yeah goat cheese truffles yeah so as as important as the cheese and charcuterie are the crackers are equally important um or the you know the crackers flatbread whatever you decide to serve with the cheese and charcuterie board our cracker selection here changes regularly but it always includes crackers from gone crackers i think they're crack they're made here in surrey um and they're really nice family and we sell we burn through their crackers like burn through their crackers and they're really good they're um sort of really cheese friendly they're not going to overpower what's on your on your cheese board i mean you want to make sure all the flavors work together you don't want to have some crazy strong cheese that's like loaded with like rye seeds or something caraway yeah. seeds or whatever that fully takes over yeah that's going to kill the flavor of all your cheese and all your meat so you yep. want to have crackers that are almost a little bit neutral yep and i think the rosemary shortbread we sell um savory shortbread here we just actually put it out today it launched so we're mm. doing a bacon and rosemary shortbread and a cheddar and black pepper shortbread tess is making rosemary and parmesan parmesan so this shortbread is really nice and i mean these these shortbread i mean seriously you don't need anything else you we need shortbread them. and a glass of red wine yeah and like some quiet time some quiet time <laughs> just give me the jug of gin and give me the, i'll see you later yeah um, so the shortbread recipe um, is really easy to do and it'll you can f put it into 
uh, logs and stick it in the freezer. You can make small pieces and just, you know, slice them and bake them when you need them. So yep. we're going to talk a little bit about that. Yep. Uh, so all mm -hmm. the recipes are posted. Uh, yeah, so if you have questions, go ahead and ask them during the class. I'll relay them to Chef. I'm going to come and go uh, with some of the recipes because they're things that I've been cooking here or using on our charcuterie boards or using for catering for a really long time. So um, anyhow, I'm going to come and go, but I'm, mm. you're going to start with the shortbread? I'm going to start with the shortbread, yeah. I'm going to get those going. I'm definitely going to tag you in when it comes to goat cheese bonanza so that we can both just be covered in goat cheese. Fun. I know, right? Mm, goaty. <laughs> Goaty goodness. Goaty goodness. Um, okay, so I'm not going to have another one of these because I won't be able to drive, but I am going to have a glass of rosé because, you know, do it's flood times. <laughs> do I get one? <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> so this is some beautiful rosé from our friends at Evolve Cellars, uh, Evolve and Time Estate Winery in the Okanagan. They make beautiful wine. You guys know I really love their wine. This rosé is perfect with a cheese and charcuterie board. It's super easy to drink, perhaps too easy, some might say. Some might. I wouldn't. Some might. I wouldn't. Some might. Um, anyhow, so when you're entertaining with cheese and charcuterie, you also want to think about what you're drinking and what's going to go with it and not, mm -hmm. send, you know, not create some super funky combinations that yeah. people don't want to eat and drink. So cheers. Cheers. All right, shortbread, shortbread on. Let's make some shortbread. Okay. Ooh, I do like that rosé. Nice, huh? That's nice. Yeah. yeah. So for our shortbread here, I'm just gonna put my food processor back together. Uh, I have the usual suspects, as I like to say all the time. I've got some flour here, Parmesan cheese. Uh, this is some room temperature butter, unsalted butter. And over here, I've just got some salt, pepper, and some chopped fresh rosemary. And I'm going to get Cheers. All right, shortbread. the shortbread. flour, the cheese, and the rosemary, salt, and pepper in my food processor. I'm going to give it a quick blitz so it's nice and combined. Then I'll add in the butter and process that. Um, once I get this together, I'm going to roll it into a log, which I have a little piece of saran wrap here for that. And then I'm going to pop it in the fridge for about five minutes, or in the freezer actually, for about five minutes while I marinate the cheese. Then I'll take it out, slice it, and uh, pop it into the oven. The reason I am going to put it in the freezer is just so that the butter can chill and come together a little bit more so that when it bakes, it doesn't just kind of get really flat. If you ever had a really flat, crispy cookie, chances are your butter uh, was warm, was at room temperature, or was if it was melted, it would still kind of ooze out and gets really crispy on the edges. So I'm going to just start by pulsing my dry ingredients here. Okay. Woo. And my butter, I've just cubed nice and small. It is the season for shortbread. Everyone's going to be making it, but now you'll be able to make your own. And this recipe, you can swap out the herbs. If you don't love yeah. rosemary, um, you can just certainly leave it out. You can just make it a Parmesan cheese shortbread. Mm -hmm. You could do Parmesan and black pepper yep. would be really good. You could do a little bit of thyme in there. I wouldn't use like basil or something, fresh basil. It's going to go black, I it's think. It's going to go black. You would have to use something like a dried basil, maybe like a dried basil and lemon, maybe, but it yeah. can be. Some lemon zest would be nice with Parmesan and black pepper. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, once you have this good base recipe, you can change it up for lots of things. So I'm pulsing this together here. And... It's still rather fine. If I pick this up here, it's sandy. At this point, my butter is broken up and it's really not going to come together. This is when you want to start adding a little bit of water, similar to when you're making uh, a pie dough. You want to add a little bit of water, just enough for it to come together. You don't always have to, but sometimes it happens. And we're just going to add a little bit at a time here until I get a workable dough. It doesn't have to turn into a big dough ball, but it's got to be enough so that I can actually force it together. So 
So you can make a big batch of this, right? Yes, uh, absolutely. And, and you can freeze it as raw dough in yep. the size of logs you'd like it to be in. So you can just slice it and bake it when you're entertaining. And it also makes a really great hostess gift. You know, to take a bag of fresh made shortbread. I mean, I'd be super happy if somebody came to my house for dinner and left that behind. Yeah, absolutely. Some savory shortbread with a little bit of cranberry gin. Yeah. Well. So <laughs> as I pick up the dough here, what you're looking for when you're pulling it out of the mixer to make sure that you've got the right amount of water or that you don't add too much to it, it should kind of just barely come together. But if you were to grab a handful of it and squeeze, it sticks together like so. So that's kind of what you're looking for here. So I'm just scooping it all out of my mixing bowl. I'm going to press it all together and then shape it into a log. And that will go into my freezer for about 10 minutes. Okay. And you can, I've seen people do this, well, we actually, we sell them in square logs. You can shape it into square logs if you want. It doesn't have to be a cylinder. Cylinder? Is that the shape I'm thinking of? Uh, do I know my shapes? Cylinder. A log. A log? Is that it? A log is cylindrical. So I forced all of my dough here together. And I'm going to need a little bit of elbow room here. Okay. Oh, there was still water in there. <laughs> okay. Now what I'm going to do with my piece of saran wrap here, I'm going to fold it over my log of dough. Okay. And then fold it, roll the log towards you guys, towards the edge of the saran wrap, and then I'll kind of even it out every time I roll it. So these cookies are pretty rich, and with the butter and the cheese in them, you don't want to have like a gigantic cookie. No. You know, you want to have like a couple of bites max. Yeah. And once it gets to this part here, once it's actually rolled up, it could be very uneven looking. We're going to fix that. We're going to twist our edges here and we're just going to roll the shortbread to try to get it into that nice log shape here, nice and even. And as I roll it, I'm also kind of pinching the edges here. I'm doing a terrible job at rolling this. Okay, and then you'll have your log of cookie dough, shortbread dough, and this guy's going to go right into the freezer so that the butter has a little bit of time to set up so that I can slice it a little bit nicer, and then it's going to go into my oven, which is preheating at 350 degrees, but while we wait for that, we are going to do a little bit of Christmas cheese, Christmas marinated cheese. So we're using um, just some sharp cheddar and some cream cheese for this. But looking at the ingredients that we're using, it doesn't have to be a cheddar. You could use any kind of cheese that you really, really like. I think this would actually be really delicious on a brie as well, um, if you were to marinate some brie. But it's really kind of up to you. And your I think preference. It would, be, it would work really well with like a neutral type cheese, like yeah. a gouda would be nice, mm -hmm. a plain, you know, a fresh gouda. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's lots of things you can do. So if you Google Christmas cheese, you'll find several recipes that are much fancier than what Tess is doing here. They're, uh, uh, you know, they're sort of people put them, make little sandwiches, like line them up perfectly, like a square of cheddar, a square of uh, cream cheese. And they make it look very fancy and festive. Not as I Tessa. sit here. Tess and is just, just making a tossed salad over there. <laughs> uh, it's my specialty. <laughs> um, so, I mean, you can, uh, this would also work with goat cheese instead of yeah. cream cheese if you wanted uh, some soft goat cheese in yep. there. Um, but we're already making goat cheese grapes. 
So even some firmer goat cheese would work in there. You ever had um, like the really, really firm goat cheese? The sliced goat cheese? Yeah. Oh, I love it. There's a really beautiful farm uh, just around the corner from us here. It's called uh, Milner Farms and it's a goat uh, farm. And they sell their chev, which is what we use when we do, you know, special charcuterie boards. They make fresh chev, and they also do some aged. They do like goat gouda. They do um, all kinds of. Uh, do they, they have goats there? They do have goats there. I love goats. And you, goats are hilarious. I love goats. Uh, and they also make goat gelato. So I have had that before. I've had as a vegan, uh, not a vegan, um, a lactose intolerant, dairy allergy. I've had goat um, ice creams before, and one that I had that was all goat milk was very tangy. And then I had one that was half goat, half almond, or something, and it was kind of okay. But it's really delicious. Yeah, goat uh, gelato is kind of tangy, like you said. It's more sort of zippy than a regular gelato. But yeah, I mean they use local fruit when it's in season, and um, they don't have the gelato all year here because it's mm -hmm. just not obviously a big seller in the winter. But anyhow, so I've got my cheddar and my cream cheese in my dish. I just added equal parts of olive oil and sherry vinegar into my mixing bowl here. And we're going to get all the other ingredients to the marinade mixed in. So this is some minced garlic, fresh garlic. I've got some green onions, some scallion that's been chopped up. There's a little bit of honey here, very important. We do have quite a bit of uh, sherry in here, quite a bit of acidity. So you always want to make sure you add a little bit of sweetness just to balance it out. Unless you like things very, very, very acidic, which there's nothing wrong with. I do know some people who prefer high acidity. So mm -hmm. this would work with uh, also red wine vinegar or champagne vinegar. Yep. Don't use, please don't use distilled vinegar or anything weird Don't like use that. white vinegar and don't use anything very strong. Do I want to say very strong? Like I wouldn't yeah. want to use like an aged balsamic or anything that's no. kind of too overpowering. Um, you could probably use like a light apple cider vinegar that's generally yeah. on the lighter end of things as well. Something that's almost sweeter in yeah. the vinegar family. Yeah. I just added in a little bit of salt, pepper, there is some dried basil and some dried oregano. This here is a, some chopped fresh herbs. I've got some chopped dill, some chopped parsley, and chopped basil. That's all going to go in here. We're going to give it a little whisk. Okay, I'm going to grab myself a little spatula. And what we're going to do is we are quite simply going to take this marinade, which smells very nice. Oh, I think I know why it's Christmas cheese now. The colors. Is it because it's red and green? Yes. She got there, ladies and gentlemen. She got there. So I just poured the marinade over top. I've also got a little bit of roasted red peppers um, that I've chopped up and popped over top there. And I'm going to give this a gentle mix. That's why I grabbed the spatula and you want to let this sit at least overnight we want at least well no i won't I mean, say at least overnight four hours yeah to like a couple hours at the very minimum okay see that's why i didn't i didn't layer it all pretty because i was going to mix it oh okay thanks tips you're right it's what i'm here for obviously i mean would you rather be anywhere else right now than with me making a mess? No. Okay. So we'll give this, oh, that felt like a very forced no, by the way. That felt yeah. like you were kind of like, I don't have a choice. Well, I was sort of thinking I'd be okay sitting in a corner by myself with this bottle of wine and my cheese, but you know, whatever. <laughs> This'll do. This'll do? Okay. Um, so if you're serving this, obviously you want to have like, a fork or something on the side. And the reason you use dry herbs, dry herbs have a totally different flavor note than they fresh. Do. So they this do. is a combination of fresh and dry, but the dry are going to rehydrate in um, the marinade. Mm -hmm. So I think it's gonna give you like, I don't know, it's, it's different than if you used all fresh herbs. And you yeah. could use all fresh. You could use all fresh. I wouldn't use only dry. No, I wouldn't use only dry because you will actually miss, one, you're going to miss the color. 
that's where like this beautiful kind of green color is coming from, is from all of our fresh herbs. Um, and sometimes they can get a little kind of, if you have too many dried herbs, it can get a little gritty. It's a little strange sometimes. Uh, if you're going to use fresh oregano though, use a very small amount of fresh oregano. Is she gonna, she's gonna replate it for me. Thanks. No, I'm not. I'm bringing some crackers over. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I was gonna oregano, say story of my life. Oregano is super strong. Oregano is super strong. So if you're gonna use fresh oregano, there's nothing wrong with that, but just use a very small amount. Less fresh oregano than even dried oregano. That's, it's just fresh oregano really punches you in the nose. So make sure you only use a teeny tiny bit. Now that this is nice and mixed here, look at that, it's like Christmas in a bowl. We're gonna set this off to the side and just let it marinate. I could pop it in my fridge, but then I'd have to try to make space in there and there's not much. But you know what? Cheese is best served at room temperature. It is, absolutely. And if you're having a party and you're making a cheese board or a cheese and charcuterie board, it's best to put it out at least an hour before your guests come. You want the cheese to come close to room temperature. You want it to temper, yeah, absolutely. That way you actually get the feel of the cheese, the smoothness of the cheese versus it just being kind of... Yeah, when it's cold, it all tastes sort of just kind of creamy. Mm -hmm. But when it's all really cold, you don't get those beautiful flavors of the cheese that you would get if it was a little bit warmer. So, yeah. um, so don't be afraid to put your cheese and charcuterie board out. Uh, before your guests arrive, unless yeah. you know you have a dog or something in the house, then you need to put it somewhere where the dog can't reach it, obviously. Or someone who will just eat it. Yeah. So this looks really nice. I don't know if, Jenna, did you get a close-up of, of that? Yeah, it looks really nice. And so you could do this, obviously, way ahead. And I would maybe serve this with some fresh baguette because the cream cheese would be really nice, sort of spread a little bit, mm -hmm. um, and some crackers for the, um, for the cheddar for cheese. For the cheddar, yeah. But is this a clean spoon? No, that's my gin spoon. Um, <laughs> clean I just, for you. Clean for me, but I'm not, gonna, I'm not going in with it. I just really want to taste this marinade because the sherry vinegar, I think, a lot of people, sherry vinegar doesn't get enough action. It doesn't, and it's so good. It's sherry vinegar is my favorite vinegar to cook with. I was yep. one of the things I was thrilled about the first day when I walked into this kitchen and I saw a giant jug of sherry vinegar. I was like, my people. Well, you can thank <laughs> Dennis for I that. Know. Dennis loves sherry vinegar, but chefs love sherry vinegar because mm -hmm. it is so, so versatile. I mean, it's acidic, but it's got this sort of, uh, like, it doesn't have an overpowering note. Like to me, I can tell balsamic. Yeah. from anything yeah. because it has such a distinct uh, flavor to it. But cherry vinegar is a nice aged vinegar too. Um, and it's just, it's neutral. It's good to use in everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, I use it, I do use it in everything. So this pickling. marinade that you just learned about on the cheese would also be delicious on vegetables. Mm -hmm. On, I mean, you could use it as a salad dressing. There's a million things you could use this for. So this recipe for the Christmas cheese, just the marinade alone is worth the price of admission, which incidentally is free. Um, yeah. So anyhow, so make this, like repurpose this recipe for this marinade. It's really good. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, what's next? How do you feel about burning some cheese while I cut some cookies and get them in the oven? <laughs> sure, I, I love burning cheese. Burning a little bit of cheese here. Um, I should probably get you something to burn on. Yeah, that'd be a good idea. Yeah. So if you're having a lot of people over, you can do a whole round of brie or you can buy a small round of brie if you're just having a couple of people. Um, or, who am I kidding? I can eat a whole little brie. <laughs> like, um, anyhow, so you want to just have some really nice, good quality brie cheese. This, this one has been cut into wedges. You can take the rind off if you like. I don't know why the rind of brie freaks people out. I don't know. But inevitably, at every party I've been to, somebody's carved out the whole the middle center. of the brie. Uh, which, I, it kind of cracks me up because the brie... The, the bloom on the outside of the brie is really mild and totally edible. So anyhow. People so get you, freaked out easy though. People do get freaked out by random things. So this is, um, this is uh, brie that's been cut into eight pieces because we here we only have these gigantic brie. Um, and then you're going to, you want to brulee this. So this is a little bit different than a baked brie. A baked brie, like the ones we sell here, need to be baked. Um, they're used, typically wrapped in puff pastry or, or they're in some sort of container because as they bake, they're going to spread outside of their rind and get all melty and delicious. This dish is meant to sort of just add a little bit of sweetness to the brie without having to bake the whole thing. It just adds another another sort of note to the brie. So you can leave the rind on or you can go ahead and carve it off if it freaks you out. 
Um, but I'm going to add just a little bit of, um, can I have a spoon, please, Absolutely. Chef? Absolutely. I'm going to add a little bit of honey on here. Honey loves cheese, um, all kinds of cheese. Honey is such a beautiful accompaniment, and the um, honey comb on a cheese board is like one of yeah. my most favorite things. So you want to add, you know, a fairly decent amount of cheese, just so it's, or sorry, of honey onto the cheese, just so it's going to sort of sit on top and look all... Although it's never a bad idea to put cheese on cheese. Well, true. And then we're going to go ahead and add a little bit of brown sugar. So this is a nice, sh uh, soft, um, golden brown sugar. You can use white sugar if you don't have brown. Uh, white sugar will work really well. We're torching it. So you want to just put a little bit of uh, brown sugar on top. And then you want to get your culinary torch. So if you don't have a torch, you can pop this under the broiler but I would recommend only broiling if you're doing a whole wheel of cheese. If you're doing wedge cheese like this, don't put it under the broiler because the whole cheese will just melt on itself. It's the rind on the cheese that holds it together while it's mm -hmm. baking. Mm -hmm. So, um, you so this can, is gonna be fun. Yeah, so you can go ahead and use um, a whole wheel and pop it under the broiler. Um, so now we're just gonna torch this, just like we're making a creme brulee. So, you want to kind of be generous with the sugar, and as it kind of caramelizes, let it do its thing. You're going to see some smoke. Don't be afraid. Unlike the popcorn machine that was smoking last And then I'm going to the come way. back, and I'm going to add just a little bit more of the sugar into some of the gaps that we have. And so this really is just, I don't know, it's kind of showy. People are like, what? You just did that to the cheese? That's amazing. Um, I don't know. And then people eat the rind. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, that's how we get look, them to eat the yeah, rind. Yeah, we tricked you. Now you're eating the rind now of the cheese. Now you're eating the rind. Um, so be pretty generous with the, with the brie, with the brulee part, because you want the nice torchy goodness. Mm -hmm. But it's going to sort of smoke and burn a little bit. That's totally cool. So this is no different than a creme brulee. Mm -hmm. Creme brulee is cream and sugar. That's exactly what that's this what is. So it's going to sort of start to melt and fall down the sides. And oh, there you go. So it's so delicious. And like a, like a creme brulee, it's going to form a really, uh, form a really hard crust, right? Yeah, like right? a shell almost. Yeah, so when, you, when this sits and comes to room temperature, you'll be able to actually crack it. So if you are doing this with just a small wedge of brie, if you're doing an individual cheese board or a cheese course after dinner, um, you can go ahead and make this exact thing and just put the put all the bits and pieces on the cut side and just do an individual portion. So you obviously want to torch it less because you're putting it on straight on the exposed cheese itself. There's a, yes. Sure, just give me one second, Jen, and I will do that. There's a restaurant in Portland uh, that we go to when we visit David's daughter, which has been like a couple of years now. It's called Cheese and Crack. And uh, it's a cheese and charcuterie kind of restaurant. And this is, that's the first place I ever had this. And I was like, oh my God, this is so brilliant. What a fun thing to do. So this is the, um, this is the brie brulee. And so that's just a, an individual portion. And so if you did that, even as a dessert, this would also work on the cambazola. So the creaminess, the little bit of blue with the burnt sugar would be phenomenal as part of a cheese course. So this one's cool enough now to pick up. I don't know if you can see. Uh, can you zoom in on that, Jenna? I can zoom in, uh, but not as close as I would like. Do you want me to run up to the camera? So, I don't know. Can you hear that? So it's crispy and, yeah, anyhow, I'm going to bring it up to the camera just a little bit so you can see it. Um, I would eat an offensive amount of that. I'm lactose intolerant. So is that better, Jenna? Yeah. I would eat okay, an offensive so amount. So that's what the burnt uh, sugar looks like on the wedge. And then this is the individual portion of the brulee. Okay. So the honey's still dripping slightly, but the sugar has totally set up and it's, it's crispy, like it's a hard top. So just like your creme brulee, when you tap it with your fork, it'll like shatter. So... That's and also an unexpected kind of textural contrast. Something that people probably aren't expecting when they're dipping into cheese is crispy Crispiness, texture, right? Yeah. So that I feel like would be so exciting if I, I've never seen something like that at someone's house or no one's ever made anything like this. 
but I would lose my marbles if someone did. Yeah, I'm, it's so fun. And if you're, you know, if you're feeling kind of showy after dinner or whatever, maybe you've had 17 glasses of wine, if you do invite me over, because I love dinner parties like that, then you want to get the torch out, but please be careful if you're burning shit after you've had 17 glasses of wine. Uh, but everybody kind of is like, oh, that's so amazing. And so Jen, for your next dinner party, bust out your torch, because I know you have one, and um, make some individual brulees, and then build that, build your dessert around the uh, brie brulee. Okay, I'm gonna take a time out now with my cheese. That's not fair. <laughs> Do you wanna that try I it? I wanna actually, try? I really wanna try okay. it. I am like, I have been waiting for this all day. You described it to me, and I was like, I am going to, I'm gonna go for the little piece. Do it. You're gonna eat the whole piece, aren't you? I am gonna eat the whole piece. I'm gonna try to be civilized. And but again, it's really important that your brie for this is at room temperature because your cheese, you don't want really cold cheese oh inside God. of that crust, right? It's delicious, isn't it? It's so good. Yeah. And so simple. Holy crap. Yeah. And so if you're having a party, this can mm. sit for quite a while just like this, mm. um, but you can torch it for in front of your Sorry, guests. I'm doing my little so. happy dance. Okay. Next. Next. All right. Yeah. We got to get for lactose intolerant people here. This is a dangerous class. So. Uh, I popped the shortbreads into the oven. I got a timer on there. And while those are doing its thing, we're going to talk a little bit about some marinated warm olives. Essentially, how to take your basic olives that you get from your olive bar from your store and just add a little bit more flavor to it. So I'm going to need this. Sorry. Oh, I was like, is that mine? No, oh. mine's there. Mine's <laughs> mine needs some help. So. I've got just a mixed olives here. We've got green olives. There's some Kalamatas in here. The pits are uh, still in the olives. And you know what? Don't get obsessed about having pitted olives. Don't obsess over the fact that you need to have pitted olives for your guests. I know that there is a pit in an olive. So if you're going to marinate olives, they look much nicer when they still have their pits intact. Maybe that's just a thing for me. I and know. I think they taste better, to be they honest. Do. Unless you're buying a stuffed olive. Yes. Um, and then there's, I mean, obviously the stuffed with like, you know, lemons or blue cheese Garlic or, or uh, pimento, whatever. Yeah. But for the most part, I'm like, if you have a nice olive mix in front of me, I won't be offended. When you go to restaurants and you get warm olives, they give you the little pit dish for a reason. Um, so I've got my mixed olives in here. I'm not going to do anything too, too crazy. I've got a little bit of rosemary that was in my fridge. I've got a couple cloves of garlic here. And I'm really just kind of grabbing stuff that I have on hand. If you have thyme, you don't have rosemary, great, use some thyme. If you don't have um, any hard herbs, so rosemary, thyme, oregano, you can use a fresh herb. Um, I'm just crushing my garlic here just to kind of wake it up and get some of the oils out. Because at the end of the day, I will be, you know, straining all of this off and just eating the olives. So I don't find it necessary to kind of chop everything up. You can absolutely if you'd like to, but I'm really just trying to infuse some of these flavors into the olives. I've got uh, some chili flakes here, but if you have some dried uh, chilies or whole chilies, you could absolutely put those in there. Of course, I've got some olive oil and enough to coat. And really when you do this, you get two products. <coughs> Pardon me. You're going to have your marinated olives and then you're going to have a fantastic um, infused olive oil that you're definitely going to want to hang on to and use for salad dressings. Um, I honestly use infused olive oil for pretty much anything. When you can I use it for your Christmas cheese. You can use it for your Christmas cheese. You can step it up with the Christmas cheese. I always keep all of my infused oils, especially if I'm uh, confiting garlic or tomatoes, I'll hang on to it. Plus it's expensive. Why would you throw it out? Why would you throw it out? Yeah. So I've got some, uh, a little bit of lemon here that I'm just peeling the zest off of. I'm going to zest a little bit of lime as well. And you can do this one of two ways. If you want to set it and forget it, I would pop it in my oven at about 275 for, I mean, I would then do it in uh, an oven safe pan or fry pans are fine, but at 275 for about an hour or you can do it stove or two hours You can do it stove top and watch it simmer for about 30 minutes I'm gonna do the stove top version just because it's a little bit quicker uh, Will these be ready to consume in 10 minutes? No, but they're gonna smell amazing I mean, It's not much longer than 10 minutes. I mean, it's not much longer. You're just warming them up. All we're gonna do is place this 
on our burner. We want this to come up to a light simmer. Let it simmer for a few minutes and then turn it off and just let them sit. And once the oil gets hot and all the aromatics get hot, then their flavor is going to start coming out and infusing. So that's going to go on my favorite stove top here. So you use lemon and lime. Actually, one of my favorite combinations in this recipe is orange. Orange. That was the first thing I looked for and I realized I didn't have any. Yeah, orange, I mean, any citrus obviously works really well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because I'm going to reuse it. No, you don't need it to be um, like I like to fully submerge them so that I do have a good amount of oil to hang on to afterwards, but you don't need to. You can just have it kind of halfway up the olives and give them a little shake as you're cooking them. Um, it just depends on if you have a way to use it. Um, the byproduct or not, which I mean, it's, it's, it's olive oil. Yeah, and you're not going to get a lot of that brininess out of the olive in this sort of saute process, so it's not going to be like weird sort of vinegary or anything. No, not at all. Not at all. All right, so you've got your shortbread in the oven. My shortbread's in the oven. Okay. Are you ready for another like... Life lesson? Yeah. I am ready for another life lesson. <laughs> My friend, Alan Zini, uh, was a chef uh, in Scott here uh, for a number of years when Well Season was open. So this would have been, you know, 17, 18 years ago. And he made this, this recipe in a class, and I was like, this is the weirdest thing ever. And then uh, I had to make a cheese board that had no dairy on it. So I had to find creative ways to use goat cheese uh, for a catering for a dinner party. And so I made this for them. People like lost their minds. And so I was like, okay, it's kind of like the brie brulee. Mm -hmm. It's super unexpected. So uh, I'm going to wear a glove. I was going to say. Because uh, I just. Uh, I got some, I got the right size in and everything for us. <laughs> Do you right. gloves? I, yeah. Because um, I have nails and it's just gross. So. Um, so, okay. So you've got some really nice fresh chef. So this would work with cream cheese. Uh-oh, did we lose connection or something, Donna? It looks like your mic is not connecting. I'll just stand really close to you like this. Oh, it's because the battery's dead. But I touched it for like 45 minutes. Um, yeah. Do you want mine? Sure, let me take yours just for a minute. Thank I'm, you. I'm super loud. Okay, so... Um, okay, so this would work with cream cheese, but it's not going to have the same flavor. So for some reason, when you do this with goat cheese, it's a little bit goaty for sure. And if you're not a lover of goat cheese, I understand not everybody loves goat cheese. But anyhow, this for some reason is not as strong as other things. And this is a little bit tedious, so this is something you definitely want to do ahead of time. So you want to take the fresh goat cheese, put it in your hand and make a little disc. And then you want to take a grape. And you seedless grapes, please. <laughs> Seeded grapes are just nasty in this. You're like, oh, what is that? Um, and it doesn't take a lot of cheese to cover them. Um, it takes surprisingly little cheese, but you want to just hide the grape inside of there. So you have this little truffle. Look at you go. You're like, you've done this before. And so you want to drop that into some chopped pistachios. Now you can use, if you don't want pistachios or don't, you know, have pistachios on hand, any kind of nuts would work for this. Um, so chopped, uh, like walnuts, pecans, any of that kind of stuff. You can also roll it in herbs, but I would use a really mild herb, like parsley or a combination of soft herbs, like parsley, dill, cilantro, that kind of thing. Um, Tessa ground these uh, pistachios, and I would grind it maybe a little bit finer into almost a bit of a powder, um, but just because it's nicer, I think, to eat like that. And, and then you just go ahead and, and wrap the, the goat cheese in the oil. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn yeah, that turn down because yeah. it's like scaring me a little bit. The oil's boiling. Um, sorry. So you can roll this in anything you like. And then you can make these way ahead of time. So when we cater, we'll pile up a little pile of these on a charcuterie board and people grab one and like, oh my God, there's a grape there's in a there. Surprise. And so they're so excited and so surprised by what's inside. Um, anyhow, they're just a really fun thing. And even if you don't love goat cheese, mm -hmm. um, it's, try one. They're not super strong. Like, I love 
And do you love goat cheese? Mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> right? So if you're using nuts of some sort, Tessa roasted these uh, pistachios before she chopped them. I would definitely recommend you roast um, your walnuts or pecans or whatever you're doing. But like I said, fresh soft herbs would work beautifully in this. You could do a mixture of dill, cilantro, parsley, Absolutely. whatever. And you can make these even a day ahead. So if you're having a dinner party, um, you can roll them well in advance. And this cheese goes a surprisingly long way. Like mm -hmm. it doesn't take much to cover the grapes, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, and if you get a little carried away with the cheese, they start to get a little bit big. Yeah, um, right now. So. Um, Have you done the old school goat cheese stuffed date wrapped in bacon? Yeah, um, I love, one of my favorite things with dates is stuffed with Parmesan. <gasps> and it's just a, a date that you slice down the center, take the pit out and fill the cavity with a really nice piece of Parmesan cheese. It's phenomenal. And that and a glass of red wine and yeah. Anything in a glass of red wine. Yeah, I'm super happy. So, I mean, these can get a bit big and unruly. Asking, can you please suggest an alternative to the goat cheese for the grape ball truffle? Yeah, so if you don't like goat cheese, you want to go ahead and use um, cream cheese. Uh, it's not going to have the same flavor, but you could mix your herbs into the cream cheese and then do an herbed cream cheese around the grape. Uh, borsin would work right? also oh, borsin. I yeah like a good borsin because you can also get I mean you can get like the rosemary borsin or the flavored borsin but totally any form of nice creamy cheese yeah that's soft and and pliable that you mm. can wrap around the grape so you can definitely see mine <laughs> <laughs> so it's easy to get carried away and make it too cheesy I think mm. but these look so beautiful just piled up on a charcuterie board and I would just make like a little pyramid of them and like they're so pretty and festive and you can you know use a mixture of herbs and nuts and you anyhow can make them any color you want to right depending on what you coat them in totally um, and this would also be a good thing if you have a nut allergy my favorite pumpkin seeds you could definitely toast off yep. toast and chop some pumpkin seeds yep. and uh, use that on the coating as well if you are not a nut or able to have nuts yeah so go ahead and make these a day in advance maybe not much longer than a day uh, because the grapes inside will start to maybe leach out a little bit of moisture, but they're super easy to do ahead. And I think they're a really fun sort of surprising element to a cheese and charcuterie board. Um, those shortbreads smell amazing. They smell really, really good. amazing. We got a little bit of, so these were in for 13 minutes, a little bit of color on the edges. I probably could keep them in for another two minutes. It depends on if you want a really crispy shortbread or more of a kind of um, softer, creamier shortbread. Does that make sense? Like a creamier? Yeah. Sometimes you can have a really crumbly shortbread or you can just have one that actually is more, I don't know where I'm going. I'm going to stop. I mean, for me, these are almost a little bit too big, to be honest. Okay. I want just like Small. a little tiny bite of that that I can just pop into my mouth. Mm -hmm. um, you can make a nice pile of them on the end of the cracker board that goes with your cheese and charcuterie. These are nice, but I feel like three or four bites. pop it in your mouth and it's yeah. this just this really nice little element but these are beautiful and you can actually cut, slice them a little bit thinner mm -hmm. so they're crispy and then you can use them to uh, as part of a canapé you can use this as a base instead of um, like a baguette slice or yep, something absolutely. like that um, they're super rich and super buttery they're super filling uh, which is why you know I like to have small ones so I can have a couple of them but if you make them thinner Mm -hmm. They'll be quite crispy, mm -hmm. and um, you still get that saltiness from the uh, the parmesan. From the parmesan, right? Yeah, they could definitely have used another mm -hmm. minute, a uh, minute or two in the oven. But actually, they taste really good. They're super salty, like in the best way from the cheese, mm -hmm. and the herbs don't overpower it. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. just a little bit of rosemary in there, but it's delicious. Yeah, and you want to use good parmesan cheese. Please don't use that stupid craft shaker that's on the shelf. You want to use really good grated parm. Um, Asiago would work really well. Yeah, Gruyere. Asiago and thyme, Greer and thyme. Greer and thyme. And mm -hmm. you can always, um, you can either keep these in the freezer in the log form until you want to bake them, or you can bake them and then freeze them, right? Shortbreads freeze exceptionally well. Yeah. So you can make a whole whack load of them, 
bake them, and then let them cool down and freeze them, and then just pull them out as you need and just let them kind of thaw. They thaw in about 15, 20 minutes mm -hmm. individually. Yeah, and, and if you if you want to refresh them, you can pop them back in the oven just for a couple of minutes before you serve them, and people are like, oh, you just took those out of the oven. Yeah. Look at you go. And yeah. then you're like suddenly the hostess with the mostess with your brie brulee and your goat cheese truffles and your warm shortbread. I mean, if I went over to someone's house and they had a spread that had savory shortbread, those truffles and that brie and the Christmas cheese, like... You'd never leave. I wouldn't leave. First off, you're just going to have to feed me through the back door because I'm just going to stay there. Um, but I but you wouldn't get invited back with that stupid shrimp ring. I'm just telling you. The one that thawed out on your car seat. To be fair, I don't get invited to a lot of places <laughs> to begin with, and that might be why. <laughs> this might be why. Oh, okay. Yeah. We're not going to talk about your personal life tonight. <laughs> uh, okay, so is that it for tonight? That's these, it. Okay, so let's take these olives out of the situation. Let's show people how to serve these olives. Okay. Um, I can do that. Do you have a dish for them, or do you want me to grab a platter for you? Uh, let's grab a platter. A platter, a platter. Okay. So we just let those come up to a quick simmer. We turn the heat off. And warm olives are one of my favorite things. I love warm olives. And I hated olives up until... Until you knew better? Well, until an Same. Italian entered my life and made me. Yeah. <laughs> Whether I, I liked to, it or not. I used to hate them too. And now I love them. I still don't love black olives, to be honest. Um, I grew up, my grandfather used to <laughs> buy those tins of the sliced black olives oh, and yes. he would like load them on a pizza and stuff. And, oh, yeah. I, I have trauma. I have black olive black trauma. Black olive trauma? Yeah. Um, boiled but vegetables. these look so beautiful, uh, piled onto um, a really nice platter with the lemon zest. I'd put the herbs on there. Um, and you may want to make sure you're draining them off because you don't want your guests dipping into the oil and getting oil on their clothes while they're trying to eat them. Oh, they might not like that. It's going to mm -hmm. be hot. Mm -hmm. You've seen me with my dragon breath when mm -hmm. I can't wait. I mean... These would definitely benefit from sitting a little bit longer. They're nice and spicy, though, from the chili flakes. Mm -hmm. And I really like the lemon. And if you wanted some freshness in these olives right now, you could just um, microplane over some fresh lemon zest and yep. even a little bit of fresh garlic on them, too. Ooh, the residual yeah. heat from, the, from the, um, the, olives. the olive oil will sort of melt that raw garlic, and it'll take the sort of the bite off the raw garlic. But yeah. Yeah. I'm going to hang on to that oil to use these for are some salad so dressing. I could eat 100 of these. Come to mm. the back door now if you want some olives <laughs> before we get into them. Mm. Okay, hot. <laughs> That's why I haven't tried one yet, because I know that they're raging. Yeah. So good. Okay, so Christmas cheese. I would take this and put it on a platter once it's marinated. Make it a little bit happy. Yeah. You grabbing a spoon? Yes. Yeah. Up. See here. Yeah, I'm gonna take the little bit of that cream cheese and just smash it on your gone cracker. I'm gonna smash it on my gone cracker and then put another massive oh, piece look of at cheese. You. I'm going for it, man. I've been looking forward to this. Someone didn't have lunch today. Mm -mm. So if you're having a party, like Chef said, you want to make sure you put out um, mm. a bowl for the pit. Is it good? Mm-hmm. <laughs> the dill. Adds a really nice acidity to it. Yeah. I mean, the sherry vinegar too, but the dill's got that really nice bite to it. Wow, that's really good. Look at you go today. Hmm. Only today. It's so fun. I love this. I love all these bits and pieces. I love entertaining like this. I love eating like this. Mm -hmm. I could just like graze all evening and have another glass of wine and laugh with my friends and not leave the table and just, you know, really, this is my favorite way of sort of socializing with people is just bits and pieces. And I know Jennifer, who's watching tonight, her and I are Facebook friends, and she posts a lot of the way she entertains. And Jen, I know some of these things are going to end up definitely on your dinner table through the holidays. So she's going to invite us, right? No, she knows better. <laughs> Plus, we're working. Oh, that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> All right, we don't have holidays yeah, during the holidays. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So anyhow, I hope you'll try some of these recipes through the holidays. Uh, if you don't feel like cooking, you can come down to Well Seasoned. You can pick up some of our shortbread out of the freezer. It's super handy to have on hand. Just pull out a log of shortbread, bake it off, and just tell everybody you made it because that's what we do. You can order a charcuterie board from us, and mm -hmm. then you just have to jazz up your own little accompaniments. We sell a lot of, I mean... 
There's so many things you can do. I mean, beautiful, like the Marcona almonds, the jams, the jellies, the honey, uh, the honeycomb. I mean, really, there's so many amazing things. So if you needed some more ideas, send us an email at askachef at wellseason.ca or pop into the store. Uh, I know the girls in the store are going to sell you the horseradish jam. Uh, it's a pear and horseradish jelly. They're all obsessed with it. They use it on all of their charcuterie boards. Mm -hmm. um, it is delicious. So if you come in asking for suggestions, you're leaving with that for sure. They'll make you buy it. Um, so yeah, order your holiday charcuterie board and have some fun with your food. I mean, really, it's just a little bit of imagination. It's not a ton of work. Um, you just have to plan ahead, like plan everything ahead. else. And let us know how it goes. If you do, let us know how it goes. We want to know. Yeah, send us pictures. Yeah, um, so next week, we'll be back here on Wednesday night. I mean, you know. Where else would we be? <laughs> Unless there's floods and high water or whatever they say, whatever, however that saying goes. Um, but we'll be back Come here. High water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so we'll be back here next Wednesday night. And we're going to continue with our holiday uh, entertaining theme. Yeah. What are we going to make? How do you feel about doing like quick Christmas desserts? Yes, I feel I good like. about that. How about holiday rice krispies? No. How do you feel about holiday rice krispies? <laughs> She's dying to break up the, the, the holiday, holiday rice krispies. krispies. Uh, so we'll do some holiday desserts that you can yeah. make ahead to serve um, either to your family or friends during the holidays. Things that will make a great hostess gift that you can take with you if you're invited places. Um, if you're invited places, please Take something nice. Don't take a shrimp ring. Don't be like Tessa. Don't be like me. I was going to say, <laughs> quick desserts, if you don't have anywhere to go, are good for the 3 a.m. <laughs> snack run. That's what mine are for. So. And if you don't have time to make your own, come here. Our dessert freezer is full of homemade deliciousness. So anyhow, we'll look forward to seeing you right back here next Wednesday night at 6 o'clock. Thanks for joining us. Um, stay safe, stay dry, and support your local farmers, please. And be patient. Be patient with us. Yeah, and don't hoard food. Please. Um, we'll see you here next Wednesday at 6 o'clock. Cheers. Cheers.